Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at sizing and animation with the Rad Tile View control. Rad Tile View is part of the Telerik Rad controls for Silverlight and WPF control suite for .NET and XAML development. Specifically today we're going to focus on managing the layout of minimized tiles by controlling the number of rows and the number of columns and also controlling the easing and the speed of animation as we move from maximized to minimized. To get started, let's open up Visual Studio and create a new project. We'll call that project Rad Tile View Rows and Columns. Make it a Silverlight 5 application. When the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we're going to add navigation, which will add the dependent references as well. To get us started, let's make a little bit of room and add six item controls to our Telerik tile view. That is six rad tile view items. And you can see that they lay themselves out with the first three in the top row and the second three in the bottom row. And if we compress or expand the browser, they stay in their rows and compress each item. However, if I click one, as we saw previously, the others move to the side, and whichever one I click on, maximize on, becomes maximized. We can control that layout with a number of attributes, one of which is the column count. If I set the column count to 2 rather than 3, you can see immediately in the designer that it resizes itself. Let's run that and you'll see that we now have two columns rather than three columns and therefore we now have three rows for the six tiles. In addition to setting the column count we can also set the maximum columns and setting that to two will constrain this to at most two columns regardless of what happens while the application is running. Rather than controlling the number of columns, we can control the number of rows. If we set the row count to 1, all of the tiles will appear in the same row in the restored state. And then, of course, as we maximize, they will adjust appropriately. As we could with columns, rather than setting the row count, we can set maximum rows. Let's close this application and take a look at what we can do with managing the animation by creating a new project. We'll call that radtileview.animation. Save that, set it to Silverlight 5, and once again we're going to add a reference to navigation. Let's make a little bit of room, and the very first thing that we're going to want to do is to create a resource for the grid. Within the grid resources, we're going to add an elastic easing. Easing has to do with how your animation starts and stops. Does it start and stop abruptly, or does it ease into motion, and what kind of motion does it ease into, both at the beginning and end? We're going to use one of the pre-configured easings, elastic easing, and you see that in our rad tile view we have set the easing to the resource that we just created. Let's run that and try the animation and see if we see a difference using the elastic easing. At this speed we're not seeing very much of a difference as we move from one tile to the next. Let's go back to restore, come back to our code and see if we can change the timing on the animation so that we can see the change in the easing more clearly. Let's drop in two attributes, reorder duration, I'm sorry, reordering duration and resizing duration. And that, as you might expect, will change the amount of time it takes to do the reordering and to do the resizing of each element. And now you can see that elastic easing that is causing a slight bounce at the beginning of the 
maximizing and minimizing of the tiles. You can also see the dramatic difference that changing the speed makes in terms of the animation of the tiles. I hope you've seen how easy it is to adjust the layout and the animation of your tiles when using Rad Tile View. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you soon, and please be sure to check out the other videos in our Rad Tile View series. Thank you.